Eric Rodebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. So I was just about to film a video for the Coral Gables Community Foundation. It was actually the second time I was gonna film it. And the question was, what is an estate plan and what is a bequest? And it's a really interesting. So through the Coral Gables Community Foundation, what I help them do is put together their bequest program. Now a bequest in very simple terms is where you use a will or a trust to make a gift. So it's like a gift in the future. So Coral Gables Community Foundation, I'm going to leave you $10,000 in my will or in my trust. And so that means heaven forbid I pass away, then that gift will be made by my trustee or my personal representative. So what I thought would be useful is first, if we just go through the vocabulary of an estate plan, okay? So first of all, what is your estate? So your estate are all of the assets that you own theoretically when you pass away. And a lot of these assets, we can break them up into different categories. And so basically one category is assets that need to go through probate, which we would have to open up a probate. That is a court process at the probate court downtown. I'm pointing at it. And what we would do is we, we file a petition, usually next of kin, whether it's a spouse or a child or some sort of uh, interested party, we'll file this petition and this will open up a legal court proceeding. A judge will be assigned and then the judge will supervise whether there's a will that's called uh, testate. If it's intestate, that means without a will. Obviously, if it's intestate, there's not going to be any bequests. And so then the judge is going to make sure that the personal representative that's in the olden days and on TV, you see it called the executor. And so the personal representative, what their job is going to be, is going to be to make sure that we pay all the bills and then ultimately we wrap up the person's lifely affairs and then we distribute the assets according to the instructions in their will. Now, in estate planning, what we're trying to do is avoid that. So estate planning, a lot of times we'll use tools like Lady Bird deeds, life estate deeds. So these are deeds where I can retitle a piece of property and maybe have it passed directly to my children or my spouse or whoever at, at the moment I pass. And that way we don't need to go ask a judge to do it for us. So if you die and you own a piece of property and it's in your name, then that's what it is. Then the only way to transfer it to the next of kin or to whoever else is with the judge. Well, that judge can take a lot of money and take a lot of time and it's very frustrating. And I just got off the phone with someone who was complaining about how long it takes. So what we want to do is avoid that. And the way we avoid it is with proper planning and the type of proper planning that we're going to do. A lot of times we're going to set up a trust. Now, the cool thing about a trust is a trust is a structure we create now. We've got what's called a settlor. That's the person who's going to give the property to the trust. We've got the beneficiaries. Those are people who are going to benefit from the trust. And what's really cool is I can have present beneficiaries like I can be my own beneficiary. And then I can have successor beneficiaries like my mom. And then heaven forbid my mom's no longer around, my sister. And then heaven forbid she's not around, I can even have it be a church or a charitable organization or whoever. And that could be the ultimate successor beneficiary. So then we're going to have the trustee. That's the person who's in charge. And again, we can have the first trustee. Maybe it's going to be me. I'm going to set up my own trust for my own benefit and I'm going to be my own trustee. And then later on, I can have a successor trustee if I pass away or I get disabled or incapacitated and so on and so forth. Um, and, and then ultimately the property. So what is the stuff that we're talking about? Sometimes it'll be bank accounts. Sometimes it'll be land, whatever it is. So in either the will or the trust, we can include a bequest. And a bequest is a really nice way to leave something to charity or, or make a gift to anyone for what it's worth. But I'm thinking of a charitable bequest. So in my, in my estate plan, so here's how it works. All of my assets, including my interest in any businesses I own, real estate, etc., is actually already owned by my trust. That's the planning part. So I created the trust and then I retitled all the assets on all my financial accounts. I went ahead and put the trust as the beneficiary for my bank account, for my retirement account, for my portfolio. And so all of that stuff is going to transfer to the trust. My trustee after I die is going to pick up the pieces and then what they're going to do is follow the instructions. And so hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't have to go to court. No probate, no judge, no 18 months, no expensive fees. And then what they're going to do is they're going to follow the instructions this much to my cousin, this much to my godson. I created a pet trust for, for my cat and dog which basically means I give a bunch of money to a named person and I'm like, hey, here's money to take care of my cat and dog. That's called a pet trust. And then I made a series of charitable bequests to my high school, Jesuit Dallas, to my college, SMU Dallas, to um, the American Cancer Society, to the American Humane Society, and to the Coral Gables Community Foundation. And so these will ultimately get specific gifts. So that is a bequest. And that is something we can put together in an estate plan. So again, it requires planning. Now, please keep this in mind. You have to do it before you're sick and disabled. 
So if you're in the ICU, it's pretty hard to get an estate plan put together uh, for the simple fact that how are we going to get two witnesses and a notary in there? So please do your planning. And if you're thinking about doing planning and you're planning a big trip, you're going to go on vacation. Don't say, oh, I'll get the estate plan done when I get back from the vacation. Don't do that. You go to Africa, you get malaria or some, some tropical disease. You don't want that. So please do your planning while you're still healthy, while you're able. And then once it's done, you know what I say? You put it in your drawer every couple of years, you dust it off, make sure that all the named parties, the beneficiaries, the trustees, the personal representatives, if we do powers of attorney, the powers of attorney, if we set up a healthcare surrogate, the healthcare uh, power of attorney. So all these people, just make sure that they're still around, make sure they're still healthy, make sure they're still willing to, to work with you. Fun story, I once did my whole estate plan and I named someone and then he and I had a big falling out and I realized, oh my goodness, I need to fix my whole estate plan because this guy's gonna be my trustee if anything happens to me. So guys, uh, charitable giving, charitable bequests, very powerful. Um, I'm gonna be doing more videos for the Coral Gables Community Foundation, so please stay tuned, bye.